buddy this is my app scatterplot 3d I'm gonna do in this video I'm gonna do a little demo just to give you an introduction to the different features that the app has and then I'll also give you a little walkthrough about how to install the app and how to uh, format your data so you can ex start exploring your own data uh, in a way I think is pretty intuitive so this data set right here is uh, some NFL combine data. Well, let me just start. Uh, my motivation for making this app was I've always thought that scatterplot software or visualization software is sort of lacking. Uh, it just has never felt all that easy to use to me and it's never all that intuitive to look at your data. So I wanted to make an app that would make uh, the exploring of data in this visual way uh, a little bit uh, more intuitive and perhaps easier to understand. Um, so the features that I wanted in this uh, in this app were I wanted to be able to explore the data from a, a bunch of different angles. So I know there are some apps out there that allow you to rotate, but I've never seen one that uh, was particularly fluid. And I've also never seen one that allowed you to zoom in and out. So you know, if I want to find a particular point over here, uh, I'm able to just rotate the data around and then zoom in on that particular point. Uh, another feature I thought was lacking in most scatterplot software was the ability to just select the point and have it give you information about that point. So let's say I find some outlier like this guy and I want to figure out who he is and what he does. So this is just an earnest. Um, so this data, like I said before, is NFL Combine data. For those of you who don't know, the NFL Combine is uh, where grad or not graduating, but uh, former college athletes go who want to play in the NFL. Uh, they go there before the NFL draft, and they have various uh, athletic abilities uh, measured on them. And in this case, I'm, we're looking at uh, forty-yard dash time the number of times the person can bench press 225 pounds and the person's vertical leap. And so in this case we can see that Justin Ernest, you know, this outlier up here, had a pretty fast 40, uh, had, you know, did a lot of bench presses, 51 reps of 225 pounds and had a pretty good vertical. So, you know, this, this, these people up here, you know, represent these super athletes, you could say, and by being able to click on them you can quickly figure out what, what's going on with these people up here. Now the last feature that I thought was lacking from most scatterplot software was the ability to search for a term and find out where exactly that point was. So let's see, say I wanted to figure out where my boy Cam Newton uh, falls in this plot. I just search his name and uh, a couple of intersecting X's will pop up and where they intersect is where Cam Newton's data point is. So you sort of have to, you know, follow the line and you, but you can basically get that he's somewhere in this region right here. So that's basically uh, an introduction, a quick introduction to some of the features. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install the app right now and get some data up and running on your own. So the first is to check to make sure that you have Java. So in order to do that you need to open up your terminal or your command prompt if you're on Windows. Uh, to run the command prompt on Windows, you just type, uh, you hit the Windows button and then you type CMD and hit enter and it'll pop up. Um, and you need to type in on either the command prompt or the terminal Java space dash version. And you should see some output that looks like this. If you get this, that means you have Java, you're good to go. If not, you need to install Java. On Windows, it's really easy. You just go to their website, download the executable, run it, you'll have Java. If you're on uh, Ubuntu, the latest Ubuntu releases don't have Java prepackaged. They have an open version, which I'm not sure if this app will work with it. You can go ahead and try, and if it does, great. If not, you need to follow the link in the manual I provided and follow those instructions to have uh, Java installed. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, that's what you'll have to do to get the app to work. So once you have Java working, uh, the next step is to change your directory, so cd to the directory containing the app. And in this case, it's uh, the folder scatterplot3d on my computer. And then to get the app running, you need to type java uh, space dash jar, then the name of the app scatterplot3d.jar, and that'll boot it up.
Okay, and uh, if you're on Windows, you don't actually have to do that. You should just should just be able to double check or sorry, double click the jar file and it should open up like this. Okay, so now the first step uh, we need to do to get our program running is to open a data file. And so we just click the open data file button and we'll go and click the file. Okay, now I'm going to show you right now what this data file looks like. And these have to be a CSV file. So this is what your file should look like uh, when opened in a spreadsheet software. Um, so as you can see, I have an identity column, I have a groups column, and I have an X, Y, and Z column. All that's necessary for your file to run is a groups column and then an X, Y, and Z column. Uh, the search column is there just for your added benefit, so you can use the search feature later. Um, important things to note. You need to note which column are your X, Y, and Z column. So in this case, it would be 3, 4, and 5. You need to note which column is your groups column. So in this case, it would be 2. You need to note your n, which is the number of rows. Uh, so this would be 3,993. You need to not have a header row. And you need to have the data sorted by the group. So these have to be in order. And then you also have to make sure that your x, y, and z are numbers and not scientific notation. notation so you know not containing the e or anything like that. And the way to do that is to click Format Cells. And then make sure it's number and not scientific. Okay, so once that's done, we're almost ready with that data set, but the next thing you have to do is you have to open in a text editor. So spreadsheet software doesn't save, uh, doesn't include a comma at the end of a row in your CSV file, so you need to do that in order for the program to be able to properly par parse apart your uh, information. And the way to do that is you open the file in a text editor, press Control H, you're going to want to search for the new line character and you're going to want to place each one of those with a comma and then another new line character. If you just hit replace all, it'll add a new line character to every line except the last one, which you will have to uh, enter manually because there's no new line character after the last line because it's the end of file. Great, so now that we have the data ready, uh, as you can, if you remember, I clicked on this to open it up. So we have to enter our n, which is 3,993. We have to enter our x column, y column, z column. The number of detail columns is the number of columns in your data set minus 3, which is the x, y, and z. So in this case, it would be 2. So 5 minus 2, or 5 minus 3, sorry, is 2. The group column is 2. Uh, the number of groups is 15. So that's another thing you have to keep track of. You're going to have to count how many different groups are included in your data set and the search column in this case is one but that's not necessary so if you don't have a colors file which I haven't showed you yet and you click submit it'll work but each group will just be assigned a random color so all of the colors that are the same represent someone from the same group and you can just uh, look at the data like before and just click on things and it'll give you all the information great so now let's say you want to use a color file so you can have you know a little bit more control over the app uh, or what the presentation looks like. Uh, you go ahead and click the clear button and it'll bring it up again. And so the color file is looks something like this. So this is what your colors file will look like when you open it in a uh, spreadsheet uh, software. And as you can see, your first column should contain your groups and they should be sorted. Uh, and your next two or next three columns will correspond to the red, green, and blue float values for the color that you want. If you look up uh, some color float charts online, you'll be able to just you know they'll have the color pictured and the corresponding red, green, and blue values. You just have to look there and just input them here. So like with the uh, data file you have to also add a comma to the end of every single row uh, in the colors file. Once that's done uh, you're all set with that. And then we're going to go ahead and open the app back up. So
So we can go ahead and find our data file and then add our corresponding color file and put all the information again. Hit submit and then our data will be displayed. And as you can see, I sort of I tried to color code it so that you know the greens and blues were these were like fast small guys, some defensive backs and receivers, and then these sort of the redder tones uh, were like big linemen types, so defensive tackles, offensive guards, things like that, and then people in the middle were uh, like quarterbacks and defensive ends and linebackers, and like people that are in the more in the middle. Um, great. So that's how you make a colors file. Um, so the next step, if you want to open a new file, what you have to do is you have to click clear. That uh, basically resets the app, so it'll close it down and then open it back up. All right. So this app is the app's being a little bit. It's kind of lagging a little bit, and I think that's because of the. Um, screen recording software I'm using so this isn't a reflection of what it's going to do to your computer alright so now let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, actual scientific data since that's what I'm sure most of you guys will be interested in so this is my uh, some of my pelvis data from uh, my master's thesis uh, my frog pelvic data so as you can see in this column uh, or in this data in the spreadsheet I have a column that includes the field museum numbers I have a genus species family uh, their clade including paraphyletic clades I have a group column that uh, is there different ecologies I have a column that shows their jumping performance if the day is available and then I have PC1, PC2, and PC3 which represent my X, Y, and Z columns or axes, axes. and so again make sure you note that the column or the data is sorted by the group column and that's a necessary step for the uh, program to run properly uh, and like you did before you need to make sure that there's a comma at the end of every uh, row in the file so you want to open both of these files in your text editors and make sure that's the case okay so let's go ahead and open that frog data up. We're going to click on the frog data. We're going to open the corresponding colors file. My n was 132. The columns for x, y, and z were 8, 9, and 10. There were 7 detail columns. 10 minus uh, 3 is 7. The group column was 6. The number of groups were 4. And the search column was 1. So I can go ahead and submit that and you'll see the data pop up. And in this case, uh, this is showing, um, this is geometric morphometric data of frog sacrum in Euro style uh, shape. So down here we have some, the pipids, you know, the weird uh, obligate aquatic frogs. And then over here you can see the blue is uh, aquatic, uh, the brown is fossorial, the yellow is terrestrial, and the green is arboreal. So we see can kind of infer that there's some bunch of hylids over here judging by the number of tree frogs and also some uh, like racophords which are in the ranoidea group. But anyways as you can see everything's color coded properly by their uh, ecology as I want it to be and when I click on a data point I can get all those columns come up so I can see uh, the field museum number, genus, species, family, clade, uh, what group it is. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be a number it wasn't on the other one if you recall it was their position so I could have had you know terrestrial for three and it would said terrestrial on every single yellow point I clicked on or arboreal on every single green point I clicked on instead of it being a two but anyways that's the that's the data and if you want to search for a specific point you would just have to remember what you had for each point uh, in the search column so in this case search column was one which is where all my field museum numbers were so if I type in 2255, uh, the program will search and find that uh, data point and it'll mark the spot. Uh, so the search has to be exactly the same as the, the search data 
uh, in your data, so or the identification uh, in your data. So in this case, if it was two two five five, you can't have like two space two two five five. That's not gonna work. It's gonna tell you it doesn't work. And like in the last case, if I was searching for Cam Newton and I had you know all lowercase, that wouldn't have worked either. You have to type it exactly the same as what is in the search column. But anyways, that's the app. Uh, I hope you guys can uh, use it and find it useful. I think it's pretty cool. Um, if you have any problems or any questions or anything like that, send me an email. If you have a bug, bug report, uh, send me your data and a description of the bug report so I can try and fix that. If you have any feature requests, go ahead and send me those way. Uh, send those my way so I can you know maybe sp spruce up the app even more. Uh, and also, if you think you like the app, you know, maybe send me a screenshot of your data so I can see it, uh, how you're using it. That'd be great. Uh, anyways, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Thanks. Bye.